okay so today what we will do is we will review like it is in the syllabus oop concepts okay I mean I'll put review in quotes because we're not really going to start hardcore oop till next lecture so uh, today what we'll do is number one we will look at the concept of a structure okay and there's a concept because this idea of a structure is not is not limited to MATLAB there are structure constructs in C and it's a general programming language idea that is a structure is an object that can hold data of different types okay so structure the definition if you will is an ob well, I don't want to say object uh, I'll just write can hold data can store data of different types okay as number one number second is just an announcement your project I'll post it by the will be up by the end of today by the end of today it's going to be signal processing uh, using OOP okay I wanted to get a project that will highlight the fact that MATLAB is a mathematical toolbox so signal processing is well mathematical so you'll discuss uh, I mean you'll not discuss you'll implement signal processing using OOP and the details will be up later today so so recall so you could say this is a review of OOP and the reference for this all this is references the CS1112 uh, slides uh, the lectures are number 20 through 24 uh, from Cornell right so this is uh, spring 2013 you can go on and look at these slides okay so the main idea uh, we talked about so we talked about the idea of abstraction okay. a few weeks back So recall, well, we have done so far functional abstraction, right? Recall, let's see, the levels of abstraction so far, we have done, let's see, what do I have? Okay. Um, functional, so this is number one, if you will. Abstraction, this is what we have covered so far, okay? This is uh, packaging uh, procedures into a function and so a program is a set of functions see, executed in a specific order right data is passed uh, to and from each function okay the next level of abstraction after this we discussed is OOP object packaging data I mean uh, packaging data and instructions into objects but before we do that let's look at uh, so today what we'll specifically look at is the concept of a structure that is uh, packaging data into a structure so it's a higher level abstraction then we'll get on to OOP so let's look at an example let's see what examples do these guys have so an example is a point structure so so a point in a plane if you will that's the 
it's the kind of well, that's the point we're going to look at the geometrical point. So, what do you think are the members of the structure? So, members of this structure. So, what data do you need to describe a point? And this is where you have to elevate your thinking, right? So what um, so what are so how do I describe a point? Yeah, x y coordinates. So uh, member structure coordinates of the point. That's it. So, so let's just look at a point in the plane. Because, uh, therefore, we will package the coordinates of a point into a structure. So let's do point in a plane, okay, just to keep it simple. Uh, therefore, to a structure, a point structure thus has two fields, okay? X and Y. Notice I have not told you what is the data type of the fields. Okay. What data type could you use to describe X and Y? What data type? What's a natural data type? Huh? Double, right? The what I'm trying to say is this Y itself can be a structure if necessary. Right? It's just this is abstract thinking. So we'll use double, uh, but for now, let's see. So let me switch into MATLAB and let me start typing away. Uh, let's see. That's about it for the writing part of this lecture. Uh, so uh, MATLAB examples. Ah. See if I can fire up MATLAB. Yep. Working MATLAB examples follow. All right. So, stop this guy. Structure is struct. Okay. So, here it is. Uh, creates a structure array with specified values, blah, blah, blah. Here's an example. So, let P1, oops, sorry. So let P1 be a point. So what do you think are the fields that you're going to use? Ah, so let me do I'll struct again. There's a field value. How many fields are you going to have? Two, right? X and Y, correct? So let's just create point P1 to struct um, X. Zero. Well, that's too easy. Minus one, and then y. Well, too easy means it's trivial. Point five. Okay. I'm not going to put a semicolon, so you can see what MATLAB returns. And if you go into your uh, workspace variable, so here's p, p1. Sorry, it's a one by one struct. And if you use the whose command, you can see it's 368 bytes, one by one struct. Okay. So to access a member of the structure, use the dot operator, right? Okay? So let's say I have another point. And we'll see how to abstract this into a function later. But uh, let me call this x, I don't know, 1, y, 2, okay? So here are two points, p1, p2. Here's p1, here's p2, yes? How will I find the midpoint of these two functions? 
Wait, sorry, what am I saying? These two points. So let's really, let's uh, do something. So, well, yeah. How, I wanted to really do this as x1, x2, y1, y2, but what is the expression for the midpoint given the xy coordinates of two points? So let's say I have, uh, let me just write it out, I guess. So p1 is x1, x, x1, y1, p2 is x2, y2, yes? How do I find the midpoint of p1, comma, p2? The average of the x coordinates. Or yep, so what is that? What is the math expression for? X2 divided by 2. X1 plus X2 divided by 2. And then Y1 plus Y2 divided by 2. Yes? So that's it. And you can do that. Uh, let's do... So let me do it this way. Right? So is this clear? This is the midpoint expression. So well, you can just type that in here. right? P1 dot X plus P2 dot X. Yes? Uh, divide by 2, comma, well, let me create a structure. I mean, let me create another point, so let me call it midpoint. As you can see, this gets, uh, what's the word? Let me put parentheses here, because I want to make sure precedence is followed, right? I want to add, I mean, you, there's also an average function you can use, right? Let's see, actually, let's see if there is one. I think Huh? There's a function called midpoint as well. No, but this is not the same thing what we want, right? I know, but I thought that you might have problems using it as an average function. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. You mean like we're using midpoint? <coughs> okay, thanks. So, yeah, I can't use the word name midpoint. So, I'll, uh, I'll do something else, but let's see. Is it average? No. I'll av. No. All right. Um, mean. Okay. Mean. It's called mean. All right. So, uh, because it's from statistics. All right. So let's start. Let's call it called m something. All right. So, struct of x coordinate is going to be the mean of what? P1 dot x, P2 dot x. Yes? Y mean of P1 dot y, ah, come on, P2 dot y. Yes? So let's, we can just check if that's correct. Hmm. Two, that doesn't look right. So I don't know. See, this is the mean from statistics. OK. Hmm. So let's not do this. Let's get back to our average. This works. P1 dot x plus P2 dot whoops, x divided by 2. I don't need a parenthesis there. OK. And then P1 dot y plus P2 dot y divided by 2. <coughs> there. OK? So that's the actual expression. Right? It's the average. Mm -hmm. So. What we are going to do now is going to make two functions, right? So we're going to make a function called make point. Right? So let's make a new function. Uh, let's see. Let me create a new folder on the desktop so I can put all this stuff in here. Uh, this is already done, so I'm going to delete this. Uh, come on. Folder. Week five, no, not week five, week seven, math lab, lecture, examples. All right. So the output argument is just going to be a structure. See what, uh, uh, oh, well, I don't know if there's a point to find. Let's call it P. Make point. <coughs> and I pass in x comma y, OK? So what this function is going to do is going to take an x, and x corner and a y corner and run a structure, a point structure. OK, so let me save this first. Desktop, x7, make point dot m, right? Uh, summary of this function goes here. 
uh, function uh, takes x coordinate and y coordinate to uh, function takes as inputs and returns not on title, it's called make point, okay? Returns a point, P, and what you could do is do under detailed explanation, for example, you could say what the domain of the input arguments are. So input arguments are of type double. Output is a point structure with two fields, X and Y p dot x and p dot y, uh, uh, not output, that's wrong. Return value is a point structure p I believe this vertical line here is your sheet edge when printing, right? So if you want to print this out, uh, you want to keep this within the vertical line, but the reason why I'm doing this is let's say you go into your uh, desktop week seven MATLAB lecture examples and you type help make point and you tap completion. No, <coughs> so it just returns your header. Okay, so the more descriptive you make this, the easier it will be for users. Okay? All right. So So finish this. What will it be? So P equals what? So I want to make a structure out of these two X and Y coordinates, yes? So what will I do? Mm -hmm. Of? Co oh, God. Quotes, yes? My X, and then Y, comma Y. Yes? That's it. Put a semicolon there. If you don't want to decode the return value, and then so if you do, uh, p1 is make point of phi comma three. There, okay. The reason why it's echoing now is because I don't have a semicolon here. Is that clear? That's why I put it. I mean, I don't want to double echo, double uh, echo, right? That's it. So now you can see how elegant this is. Uh, by using this make function, all right, and this will actually become our constructor, right? Well, if you're going to make a point object, which we're not going to, but whatever. I'll do an example in lecture of the polynomial class, because actually, uh, on a side, I think I'm online, so we actually Google search for uh, MATLAB OOP. For this is next week polynomial example. So this is what I'll go through, FYI. All right. This is a polynomial class. So here, for example, you can, it'll actually display in polynomial form, right? That's what we're building up towards. Okay, so this is make point. Let's see, we can, let's do a function to compute the distances between two points, okay? Let's do a new function. So, it's called, well, distance between points, okay? Uh, distance between points. Now, what are its input arguments and what are its output arguments? What is the input, like, domain type of this function? What's the output? What kind of inputs is going to take? How many inputs? Two, what are, what is the type of those inputs? What type are they going to be? No, not matrices. What, what type? No, it's not double. What type is it going to be? Huh? More specifically. I mean, for us, abstractly, what is the name for the structure? Point. It's just going to be points. That's all you should, you should talk about now. So when you write the help for this function, distance between points uh, takes 
returns distance between two points. Okay, so detailed explanation uh, inputs or points P1, P2 use make point to create points, for example. All right, <coughs> and then output is going to be what? No. So the distance between points is points. So what, what type is distance going to be? Double. Right? It's just output is D, distance between points. Okay. Uh, type double. Whatever. Okay? Is that clear? Again, this is the idea of abstraction, right? It's like a, uh, let me put this in here, P1, P2. <coughs> The user who's going to use your points structure doesn't know about the inner workings of the of the data type, if you will. Okay. All right. So, uh, how do you compute the distance between two points x1, x2? So there are many distances. Okay, I'm going to do the standard Euclidean distance. So what is it? What's the expression for it? So we have two points, P1, P2. What is the distance between them? The Euclidean distance. What's the expression here, given right here? Mm -hmm. Square root of what? Is it 0.1 squared plus 0.2 squared? This is right. Well, if I have the point zero comma zero, no, it's one comma three, and I don't know five comma six. What's the distance between these two? What's the expression for Euclidean distance? The square root of the square of the differences between the axes. Yes. So the square root of x two minus x one, the whole square. Yes. Yeah. Plus y2 minus y1 the whole square. That's the expression for Euclidean distance, okay? So how did you can apply it to this um, to any point? So let's just type this in, right? Uh, so now d equals ah, square root. There's a square root function, yes? It's qrt. Yep. Ah, that's very nice MATLAB uh, uh, whatever. Online help, if you will, shows you yes, there's a square root function, and it's saying it's invalid syntax, but well, we haven't finished it yet. So now, I want to type this in, right? X, P, x2 minus x1 the whole squared plus y2 minus y1 the whole squared. I get x2 and x1. I mean, x, I get I get x1 y1, x2 y2 from my p1. Whoops, from my p1 and p2. So how do I do that? Uh, note. Okay. Oh, actually, this is a very good point. Almost. Uh, hold on. Note. Uh, we compute Euclidean distance. Uh, d s square root of uh, 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 given x1, y1, x2, y2, uh, d is square root of x2 minus x1, the whole squared, plus y2 minus y1, the whole square, yes? Now I can't just type this in, so what is it, p1? p1 dot x? p2 dot? x, ah, correct? Plus what? Mm -hmm. P2 dot one. Yes. Squared semicolon. So let's just uh, see if this works. So P1 is make point five comma three. P2 is make point seven comma pi. All right. Okay. And then let's see. D is distance between points. P1, P2, and you get some distance, which I don't know if it's right. Okay. 
And you can use sanity checks. I mean, you can make uh, points that are the vertices of a right angle triangle and see if the distances all work out, like for example. Notice how I said that points as vertices of a right angle triangle. Right? So you got to uh, get this whole uh, mathematical uh, language correct. And that's again the point of using a software like MATLAB, right? And if you notice, all these projects have a mathematical flavor to it, and that's why I stopped. I'm not going to discuss linked lists. Sorry. It's, yeah, you can create linked lists in MATLAB. That's what we discussed before, uh, I mean, like a few weeks ago. But it doesn't really showcase the power of MATLAB. OK, so let's do uh, another function. So what's another function we can do? Give me some ideas. So we have points. So you can do make point, distance between points. What's a natural thing you can do? What is a visual thing you can do? Plot points. Plot points. Right, let's call it plot points. Well, let's do this. Plot point is a good idea. Let's draw lines between points. Okay, draw lines. That's for to make it more exciting. So you visual, visualize it, plot it graphically, right? Oh, by the way, if you want a good exercise, I'm not going to do this. Um, it was plot point was mentioned, okay? So I, you should do this. That's a good exercise. So what is something that comes to mind when you talk about plot points? Like when you write, okay, let me just write the function here plot points. So uh, what is something that comes to mind? Like when you're writing this function, what, what goes through your mind? Give me some ideas. Not, huh? How many, How many points you want to plot, right? Ideally, what do you want to do? Huh? Any number. You want to be able to have a variable length argument list, OK? So that's your exercise. MATLAB can do, MATLAB functions can have MATLAB function variable length argument list. See, exactly, this is what it is. Where argin, where argin, yeah, so I got it right. Okay, try this. So do a plot points function and use where, arg, where argin to have a variable length argument list. Okay, so you can just do p1, p2, p3, blah, 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 define points, and then say plot points of that. Okay, is that clear? So try that. Um, let me do the draw lines. Uh, let's see, draw lines between points. So p1, p2, and then let's do color. Right. What's the output argument to this? So you, if you think that there is no output, that's kind of correct in the sense that what you're going to return is the handle of a graphics object. Right? So what comes out is a graphics object, a, a figure. right? So you can return a handle to that figure. So in sense that, that could be your, since we're doing only the plane, that's your xy coordinate system. right? Again, this is a very abstract level of thinking, and this is the kind of thinking you should train yourself to do. Right? It's all over engineering. But draw lines, uh, I'm not going to return anything for now. Um, draw lines, simp uh, plot a line between points P1 and P2 with color C. OK, uh, draw lines. Detail explanation goes here. Input uh, to function are uh, two points, P1, P2 and the line color C, output is none. But technically, we should return, and we'll do this when we do whoop, right? A handle to the graphic, to a graphics object, OK? Uh, graphics object, uh, that is an xy plane, OK? For example, if you want to, why would you want to do this? Simple. If you want to draw lines, uh, between multiple points, okay, on the same x y space. Okay, what's the command to plot in MATLAB? 
What's the command? I don't know if we have discussed this, but I don't remember. No, yeah, we have discussed this. I remember. What? It's just plot. Okay. So what does plot take? Let's take a look. Uh, hell, plot. Uh, x, y plots vector x versus uh, vector y. Um, blah, blah, blah. So what do we need? Uh, so here it is. It's a character string x, y, s. So this is, uh, so it's a character string. The, the color argument and the line color C uh, characters and the line colors and the character string uh, line color C as a character string. Okay, so just to make tell the user that you have to send a character string. Let's report in quotes. That's my that's what I'm that's what I'm trying to say. Right. Okay, so we're going to use a plot command. So here is the syntax of the plot command: x comma y. So it's the x coordinate first, y coordinate next, followed by the color. Yes. So I'll fill this in. So what do I do? I want to draw lines between points. Yes. Oh, well, here it is. X, so go back to plot. Line up, blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. Here. So, in other words, if we specify multiple points, plot interpolates a line between them, yes? So, how do I do that? What's the syntax? <coughs> Plot what? P1? Let's see what happens if we do this. Uh, C. Yes? Just see if this is right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do just simply, yes? Yes, you have to do this in an array. Why? So in other words, if you look at this, all right, so if you, that's correct. So you need to give it a vector argument. Okay, so fix this. So since you already spotted the um, logic error, so how do you fix this? So tell me what it is. Plot array p1.x, comma. Uh, and then plot uh, uh, p1.p2.x. Yes. I don't think you need a comma because let's see. It doesn't matter as long as they're the same, they line up dimensionally. So let's try that. Um, oops, what am I copying? I don't need to copy that. All right. So now, draw lines, draw lines, draw lines, okay, make point, yes, 0, 0, oh, crap, sorry, 0, 0, right, make point, 1, 1, yes, color red, okay, boom, okay, Again, it's all abstract, right? The power of abstraction. Okay, so here's a fun exercise uh, from Cordell, right? We're gonna make we're gonna make a script, right? Uh, pick up sticks. So S is a random. We're gonna pick uh, a random color choice, color 
string uh, character string okay uh, let's see for the heck for k equals 1 to 100 uh, p equals make point what's the random function called okay, random all right so let's see p is two random points random random okay q is two random points random random all right uh, so the color is going to be s so i'm going to scale this uh, because i think random returns a number between zero and one anyway so i'll just type this in so I want to scale it by six and make sure I don't have any uh, decimals. Okay, so that's that. Let's do draw lines. Should be cool. P Q C. Okay. End. Yes. So let's make sure. I'll just call this I don't know, uh, pickup sticks. Okay. So the loop is ending. These are points. Uh, doesn't matter if these are decimal, right? Just do pickup sticks. See what happens. Close. I mean, it doesn't matter if I close the figure. It's going to. Let's see, pickup sticks. I don't know if I need a hold. Undefined variable p. Is it because the it's case sensitive? Let's try that. Index out of bounds. Hmm. So what does random give you? Let's see. Rand. Let's just try rand. Hmm. Uniformly distributed pseudo random numbers. Uh, so interval A comma B. I think rand is the one we want. Go back here. It's not random. I think it's rand. I think rand is the one which returns between zero and one. So anyway, let's try this again. Okay. I have only one line because. Uh, hold on. Because I haven't done hold. Not create new figure window. Okay, so let's try this. Ah, there you go. Ha ha. All right. So there is a, a kind of like a bug in the MATLAB code Cornell has online, but there you go. All right. So you saw the problem, right? If I did not have hold on, I created a new figure window every time draw lines was triggered. Yes. There it is. Pretty cool. All right. Okay, so let's do um, one more example these guys have. Should we? Okay. So, actually, let's do this. We have only eight minutes, right? So I'm going to stop here. So next time what we're going to do is we're going to move into object-oriented program, right? So we're going to look at exam uh, what's the word we're going to see how we can take this abstraction one level further up well if you want to call it like that and think about not point objects but what are what is the difference between an object and a structure so if you will an object if you recall from f a few weeks back has both properties which is the data and methods which are the functions that act on the data okay so that's an example of an object well, actually, an object is an instance of a class, and a class has methods and properties. Okay, so that's where we will continue next time. We are done.